Mode. We at Car Magazine believe that bland is banned, so we've come to a Paris Motor Show to check out the most important cars of 2015. Come and join us inside, we'll have a look around. Over on Daimler, they've got the Smart 4.2 at the bottom end, and up here, we're sitting in the AMG GT. This is a 911 turbo rifle. It's going to be about £95,000, £110,000 for the S. The S has got 503 horsepower from its V8 by turbo 4 litre. It's a new engine. This actually shares quite a few bits with the SLS. It's aluminium underneath with steel as well, and it arrives in March next year. Now, Car Magazine's George Cack has already been in it, as you might expect, and he reports it's pretty I can't wait to have a game. What a list for Goldwing Doors might be. you don't have to spend nearly £100,000 to get an interesting car. This is the third generation Smart 42. It's actually twinned appropriately enough with a Renault Twingo. It's only 2.9 metres long. It's not much longer than I am. It's rear engine. And one of the best things, gone is that dreadful lurching gearbox, which used to change gear like this. And that's a good thing. So look who we've bumped into, Mark Olson, our editor at large of Car Magazine, and he's nominating the Discovery Sport on the Land Rover stand as one of the key cars of 2015. Now, Mark, tell us about this. Why are you so revved up by it? Well, uh, although Land Rover absolutely determined that it's not a replacement for Freelander, it is actually a replacement for Freelander, but the big thing about this, although it's got the same sort of footprint, this car, the new Discovery Sport, does actually have a seven-seat configuration, although they're insisting that it's five seats plus two, because the rear seats are absolutely tiny, but right. you can squeeze a couple of kids in there. But it, it looks very Range Rover y to me. Is it, what, what's happening to a Land Rover? What is a Land Rover now? Oh, definitely. Uh, I think that, I mean, everybody wants to go premium. Land Rover wants to go premium because that's where the profits are. And there's no doubt that Range Rover's been a massive success for them. And uh, now they're going to uh, launch a whole range of Discovery models. This is the first. And they're going to definitely push it up that premium scale to make it uh, look and feel more desirable. And I, it's a shame in a way because I quite like the, the more rugged, boxy looking Discoveries of old. Um, but having said that, I'm sure they're going to sell absolutely millions of these cars it's uh, the price point is probably going to be around the 30 32,000 mark um, it's really it's lighter it's more aerodynamic uh, and it, it's really functional inside I've had a bit of a play around with the seats in there it's got sliding middle row and that kind of thing so great for families Brilliant. I guess it's clear to way also for the next Defender which is probably the next year's film 2016 Now you're looking at what Car Magazine thinks could be one of the best sports cars of 2015. It's the new fourth generation Mazda MX-5. They've taken what makes an MX-5 special and distilled it. It's the smallest one yet. It's also 100 kilograms lighter than the car it replaces. Why is this good? Because it only needs a 1.5 litre Skyactiv engine. It only needs 16 inch alloy wheels. Everything about it can be smaller. It's a real virtuous circle. Now if you can live with a slightly crisp angle BMW Z4 styling, it could be one of the cars to watch in 2015. Joined now by Car Magazine's Gavin Green, a, a face familiar to many of you, I'm sure. And we're standing by one of the key cars of 2015, Gavin, yeah. the Jaguar XE. Yeah. What's your take on it? Um, I, I think it's a very well-judged car. Um, I have to say, when I first saw it um, a couple of weeks ago, I felt it was more conservative than I thought it would be, and possibly a bit more predictable than I thought it would be. Given Jag, you've done some really quite brave things recently. Um, however, in retrospect, I think it's, it's a very well-judged car. I think it's completely appropriate, considering how many they'll try to sell. But there are quite a few derivative angles. For instance, part of the front wing reminds me very much of the 3 Series. And that rear um, uh, rear post looks suspiciously like a Hofmeister kink, which of course is a great BMW styling touch. So there are elements of it that look quite derivative. But as I said, I think um, considering it's a, it's a car that's supposed to sell in large volumes, it'll be Jaguar's best-selling car ever, and probably by a large margin. Um, I think it's a very well-judged car and very, a very appropriate car. And I think the, you know, the tech underneath that skin that skin is slightly derivative from yeah. some angles, a bit cautious maybe from yeah. others, but that's what the market yes. expects apparently. Uh, but the tech underneath yeah. is anything yeah. but cautious. That's exactly right. I think you're right. I think the market does expect, you know, it is a fairly conservative market. They are trying to woo people away from 3 Series, A4 and C-Class. And this is a car that I think will do that. But I think, Tim, you're absolutely right. The most impressive thing is under the skin. Um, this is a car with an all-aluminium platform, something Jaguar and Land Rover have become expert at recently. They're the world they're the 
world's largest producer of lightweight aluminium architectures. And that should give the car an advantage in agility, in handling, in ride, um, all the things that lightweight gives. And then you add the new lightweight Ingenium engines. We haven't driven them yet, but we've every reason to suspect they'll be good. And again, they're light. So the upshot of all that should be a car that does drive very well. We'll have to wait a while to see that, but um, I, I think the, the promise is there. Now, Volvo says the second generation XC90, the perfect all-season family four-wheel drive. Seven seats like four, a much better cabin though. Lovely crystal glass gear lever and a lovely iPad style central console as well. More expensive though, about £45,000, up from 37 k today. So many cars are getting turbochargers nowadays. Even Ferrari is going to be at it in 2015, but so a Honda with Civic Type R arriving next year is going to get the turbo. Now, that means that about 300 horsepower, I worry the Type R recipe is going to change a lot. It's always been about high revs, brilliant gear change. Can this car deliver still? I really hope so. Now here's one 2015 car that you can't get in the UK. It's a new Renault Espace and it's not being engineered in right-hand drive. That's a real pity. I mean, Renault have done quite a good job of reinventing the people carrier again. It's a bit more crossover-y, a bit sturdier. I think Renault should bring it in. What about it?